The NBA playoffs this year have been nothing short of amazing, with so many tightly contested games night after night, and it's legitimately anyone's race for the title still. But with those eight teams still being alive, there are currently 22 other squads at home planning out how to get themselves into position to make a deeper run next year, and with that has come some notable rumors about big names potentially being on the move. This, of course, got addressed in a recent Bleacher Report article where they proposed for blockbuster trade ideas featuring some of the biggest names in the game that also happen to be on the trade block according to the rumor mill. As always, I'll be going through each one, analyzing whether or not the trades make sense, why or why not each team involved would want to do it, and who benefits the most from it. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but I'd also very much appreciate it. Now, now with that being said, let's begin. The first proposal from the article that we'll be going over is between the Atlanta Hawks and the New Orleans Pelicans, and in it, the Pelicans receive Trey Young and Onyeka Okongwu in exchange for Dyson Daniels, Brandon Ingram, Larry Nance Jr., three first round picks, and a second round pick. After yet another disappointing season together, it seems like a foregone conclusion that the Hawks are going to look to split up their backcourt duo of Trey Young and DeJounte Murray, and based on everything that has been speculated in reports, they could both be up for grabs. The Pelicans went through this season with a lot of optimism for most of it, and at one point they were fully healthy and looking poised to snag a top four seed to claim home court advantage in a playoff series. But then the injury bug began to strike them again, and their weaknesses became very glaring by the time they got swept by the Thunder in the first round. The Pelicans desperately need a true point guard in their lineup to run the show, because CJ McCollum is much more of a scorer by nature and Brandon Ingram's decision making on the wing is not trustworthy enough to be a primary ball handler. Pairing Trey Young and Zion Williamson would unlock his game in a way we haven't seen since his Duke days and his first two seasons when Lonzo Ball's passing prowess was in the lineup. Since then, Zion has proven he can be unstoppably physical as a bully in the paint, but there isn't anyone around him consistently setting him up like a point guard should be doing. And even though we know Trey Young comes with his own flaws on the defensive end, he would take this team to new heights on the offensive side, and Onyeka Okongwu provides an easy replacement for Jonas Valanciunas, who is now a free agent. This is an obvious yes from the Pelicans' perspective, and honestly, I think the Hawks could be convinced to get on board with it too. Brandon Ingram's value is probably lower than it's been in a while after his horrible playoff showing, but he also wasn't fully healthy, and he could come up in the Hawks and keep them competitive while also allowing DeJounte Murray to go back to being a point guard. The three first round picks also definitely sweeten the deal quite a bit, so all in all, we're starting off with a trade that I think would intrigue both sides. The next proposal from the article is between the Los Angeles Clippers and the New York Knicks, and it's a sign-and-trade deal where the Knicks receive Paul George, and the Clippers receive Boyan Bogdanovich, Julius Randle, Jericho Sims, three first-round picks, and a second-round pick. Of course, in order for Paul George to even be traded, he would have to opt into his contract and be willing to work with the Clippers in trade discussions, which is already a lot to be asking of someone who could simply opt out and explore his own options on the open market. But on top of all of that, this is just way too much to give up for the 2024 version of Paul George, especially in a sign-in trade, which is never a situation where teams have to overpay to get the player that they want. Sign and trade deals are done specifically to either make the money work or done as a courtesy to the team trading away their star player as a way to do right by them. But in return, they're forced to take less because they don't really have any leverage. There is no world where a team would have to trade away an all-star player like Julius Randle plus three first round picks for Paul George right now under these circumstances. And on top of that, I really don't think the Knicks would want to give Paul George a max contract either, which is the only way they would attract him there. They just traded for OG Ananobi, who they are going to have to pay a hefty contract extension to this offseason. And if they were going to make a move pushing all of their chips onto the table, they would swing a lot higher than Paul George. Upgrading from Julius Randle is definitely a priority for the Knicks with all of the success that they're already finding without him on the court in this year's postseason, but this is just not the right move at all for that. 
The next proposal from the article is between the Los Angeles Lakers and the Cleveland Cavaliers, where the Lakers receive Donovan Mitchell in exchange for Rui Hachimura, Jalen Hood Shafino, Austin Reeves, three first round picks, two first round pick swaps, and a second round pick. The Lakers will probably look completely different next season, but the route in which they go about igniting that change will depend fully on what LeBron James decides to do. He's already flirting with opting out of his contract and exploring his options elsewhere as a free agent, so the Lakers may feel the need to swing big to convince him to stay. And in this, we have an offer that actually connects them with another player who has been prevalent on the rumor mill for a while too in Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell is reportedly not looking to sign an extension with the Cavaliers at this point in time, and he only has one more year on his current contract. So if it becomes clear that Mitchell won't be there long term, they'll definitely see what kind of offers they get, and this really isn't a bad starting point at all. They'll have to keep in mind that players on expiring contracts don't hold as much value in trade discussions, so the fact that there's still three first round picks on the table here, and some quality talent that fits in their area of need will definitely intrigue them. Rui Hachimura is a great defensive wing who provides more on offense than Isaac Okoro. Austin Reeves is a really solid secondary playmaker, even though he is obviously a downgrade from Mitchell, but he can still step into that void that Mitchell would leave behind, and it would let Darius Garland handle more of the point guard duties. Donovan Mitchell, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis is definitely a trio worth rolling the dice for, and could firmly put them back in the mix at the top of the Western Conference. And finally, the last proposal from the article we'll be discussing today is between the Charlotte Hornets and the Orlando Magic, where the Magic receive LaMelo Ball in exchange for Anthony Black, three first round picks, and a pick swap. The Magic let the world know this postseason that their time is coming very soon. They may have lost in Game 7 against the Cavaliers in the first round, but for a young team going through their first playoff run together as a core, there was a lot of positives to take from it and build off of. One thing that I think became very clear though was the fact that they're severely lacking in the playmaking department on offense. The Magic are a dominant defensive unit across the board, but they were also the worst ranked offense in the playoffs this year, and Paolo Bancaro cannot do everything. LaMelo Ball has fallen kind of under the radar the last few years due to injuries and the fact that the Hornets just haven't made much noise, but when he's healthy, he's easily one of the craftiest playmakers in the league with elite court vision and passing talent, getting his teammates involved with easy looks regularly, and his fit in Orlando is a match made in heaven. Unfortunately for Magic fans though, I don't really see the Hornets going through with something like this at all. The Hornets are still very early in their rebuilding phase, and LaMelo is definitely the player at the heart of a lot of their plans, so to trade him away for draft capital would be a move indicating that they're about to restart their rebuild all over again, which just doesn't make any sense. LaMelo Ball is basically the Hornets' timeline, as he is still just 22 years old, so this would be a head-scratching trade for them to make at this point in time. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about these proposed trades. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.